Alrighty folks, so I have permission to share an email and answer it on video. As you can imagine, I get quite a few emails from people asking me questions about their Kundalini awakening experiences or what they think is Kundalini awakening. Uh, and I can't answer things via email, it's just not feasible. Um, when I read an email, if I do it to feel into a response that is beneficial for the student, takes quite a lot of energy and time um, and so you know I suggest the person does a session with me because then we can actually work together and I can ask some questions and elicit more information and get a more full picture um, and not everyone has the means to do that um, and so I also offer to answer it on video because I'm willing to put in that more time knowing that other people might benefit from the response. Okay, so here is the, the email that I received. I'm contacting you because I had a spontaneous Kundalini awakening that happened a few years ago. Now, this is the first thing, is there's no description of the awakening. And when people use that term, Kundalini awakening, it's almost become a nonsensical term because it's used to encompass so many different symptoms and phenomena that may or may not be related to an actual awakening, which is a shift in perspective related to how one perceives reality and how one perceives oneself. It is not just phenomena arising. It is not just seeing lights or having insights or noticing energy moving around the spine. Like noticing energy within the body is is just becoming more aware of prana. It's not actually necessarily kundalini awakening. You know, so that's the first thing in the email is that I've got no idea what this person means when they when they're saying they've had a spontaneous kundalini awakening. I don't know what what that means to them and therefore there's no actual real useful information being um, communicated with me. In that time, I stopped spiritual practices to get grounded. It worked at first and then came back slowly again, but I couldn't resist. Okay, so again, I stopped spiritual practices. I don't, there's no, there's no definition of what those are. And again, there's so many different practices that people perceive as spiritual practices. So I have no idea what that person's been doing. You know, were they sitting chanting for two hours a day? Were they doing yoga on YouTube for half an hour a day? Were they reading new age books? Like what does that mean, a spiritual practice? I don't know. So because I don't know what it means, I can't actually respond to it, which is why if I'm doing a session with someone, I can get very exact. What do you mean by a spiritual practice? How often are you practicing? What view teachings are you working with? You know, I can ask those questions. Um, to use it to get grounded, kind of have a sense of most people are using that in the same sort of way. Uh, and it worked at first, but then came back slowly again and couldn't resist. And again, I'm unclear as to what they mean. It came back slowly again. Does that mean there was more prana moving in the system? I'm unsure. Uh, I've tried different methods, no description of the methods, to help integrate but nothing has worked. I'm like, okay, what do you mean by integrate? Again, it's one of those words that's pointing at something, but I don't know what the person means by it. Um, integration, when I use the word integrate, to integrate your Kundalini Awakening, for example, because I have a standalone course, it's just a four week course people can do on that. What I'm referring to is someone getting really clear on what they're doing on the spiritual path, which traditional pathway they're working with, what practices they're working with, and starting to do the challenging work of liberation, right? Awakening, if it has happened, and for probably 70% of the people that contact me or more, there hasn't been any kind of awakening. There's just phenomena that's arising and subsiding. Um, and, you know, I won't even go down there right now. So integration is the liberation process, which is the dissolving of condition and conditioning and the resolving of karmic patterns. And integration is an ongoing process that continues to happen probably forever, you could say. Um, and when I'm working with students, integration is often about unlearning all of them, the unbeneficial, non-beneficial um, beliefs, 
approaches, mindsets that people have around the spiritual path because they've been, you know, looking at so many different things. And it's really, really useful on the spiritual path if you actually want to get somewhere to be walking one path, right? It's like if you're going from Paris to London, you take one path. Whereas on the spiritual path, what people are so often doing is they dabble here and they dabble there and they dabble over there and they do a bit of this and they do a bit of that and they don't realize that this is actually in opposition to that and so this is in opposition to that and, and they don't get anywhere, right? And so integration is so much about clarifying where are you at on the path? What path are you on? What practices are you doing? What view teachers are you working? View teachings are you working with? And are they actually going to get you to where it is you think you're going? And where do you think you're going? And why do you want to go there? <laughs> so there's a lot of examining unconscious assumptions, right, to come to clarity. Alrighty. All right, so I've tried different methods to help integrate, but nothing worked. Okay, so again, that I like what, what different methods? What does integrate mean? And when you say nothing worked, what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to achieve awakening and liberation? Or are you trying to stop the energy from impacting your daily life? Or like, w what are you trying to do? Um, I realize when I do nothing to move the energy, which implies that something is being done to move the energy sometimes, the days go by and it feels like the energy gets quiet, but it doesn't feel right. Okay. When I work with people, um, so Kundalini is a way to talk about prana. Not all pranic movement is Kundalini as such either, in the same way that not all water is an ocean but the ocean is always all water <laughs> and recognizing that when there starts to be spontaneous movement of energy through the system that is the awakening and liberation process spontaneously happening and when you learn how to stop resisting it controlling it managing it manipulating it and just allowing it to be and being okay with that then there's a lot more ease that comes into the system. And I feel like that's what this line is referring to a little bit, right? And one of the suggestions that I make when I work with people is take half an hour a day, 15 minutes a day, and simply be, like jump on a yoga mat. You don't need a yoga mat though. It just gives you a handy location. Um, maybe put on some music, maybe not. But just start to notice your breath, notice your body, and allow whatever wants to happen to happen now for some people that's really scary because it invokes a whole lot of fear right because all of a sudden all kinds of things can happen and this is you know it's about integration it's because the person still has such a strong sense of identity they're still trying to control manage and manipulate reality so the idea of just surrendering and allowing whatever is to be is like you know um, and so in that case then we'll work with the fear first right Okay, I think I need to do something that can help for my day to day, but shouldn't be any meditation or pranayamas. Again, I, mean, I kind of get what the person is pointing to. They're like, I feel like I need to do something. But again, I need to get more specific. I need to understand what do you mean by your day to day? What do you, what, you know, why not meditation and pranayama? Where are you coming from with that? And like, I just need to be able to have the conversation really. Like how, I can't suggest anything from and then and then it's like what do you suggest um, a few months ago I started eating healthier food with no processed food great awesome it's always good to eat healthier food no matter whether you're awakening or not it doesn't you know that's awesome um, and so you can see like when I receive an email like this and you know I understand how scary it is how disorientating it is um, how freaky it can be to be experiencing things that the mainstream doesn't necessarily acknowledge yet. And so, you know, when people take the time and effort to send me an email, there is a part of me that really wants to support and help. And I only have so much time, you know, to be able to do things. Uh, this has been my life for the last 20, 30 years. I have a wealth of understanding. Like when I work with students one-to-one, -one, and they are willing and able to receive and put things into practice, it's extraordinary what can unfold. Um, and I can't, you know, like I said, I can't really necessarily help through 
an email, uh, which is one of the reasons why I created my course, you know, Integrate Your Kundalini Awakening. It's, it's $97, but I get people, if someone emails me and say, I don't have the money, I just give them a coupon. You know, like, no, I've never turned anybody away for financial reasons. Um, yeah, it's so much about the, the willingness to show up and be open, be curious, receive, and then take the action, do the practice, you know, like that is, that is the thing. All right, so let me just feel into this person. So my suggestion would be, and in some ways it's a generic suggestion, uh, but and it may be useful for a whole lot of you. My suggestion would be, one, clarify your relationship to the spiritual path. What does that mean for you? Okay. And when you clarify your relationship to the spiritual path, clarify what your goal is. What are the fruits that you're wanting to experience? Right. And then once you're clear on that, your relationship and the goal, then find a path that leads to that goal. If you get really clear and go, you know what, I want to go to London, then you know that you need to find a path that leads to London. If you're like, oh, actually, I think I want to go to New York, then you need to find a path that goes to New York. Because contrary to popular opinion or thought, it's not all the same. It's not all one. Different paths lead to different fruits, right? So clarity. What's your relationship to the path? Where are you headed? Find a path that leads you there. Learn the view teachings. Every path has a different view teaching. A view teaching is how to perceive reality and how to perceive yourself in order to reach the fruit, right? And then learn the practices and do the practices. Like that's where I would start any of you that are going through Kundalini Awakening. Relationship to the path, to the spiritual path, where it is you want to go. Choose a path, learn the view teachings, do the practices, the fruits will unfold. And recognize that often there is interwoven very human things going on around mental illness, around physical health, and you need to attend to those. And sometimes it's really good to go see a very good somatic psychotherapist or a transcendental psychotherapist, someone who understands the spiritual path and does their psychotherapy, etc., their psychology within the context of spirituality, you see, because not all spiritual teachers or yoga teachers, etc., know how to resolve trauma or know how to work with those aspects. And traditionally, this is what I'm coming to realize from doing a lot of practice and also so much healing on the path, is that the practice itself burns up the shit. The practice itself heals the trauma. But you need to be willing to do hours of practice a day. You know, like at the moment, I'm doing probably an hour and a half a day consistently. Even when I'm, if I'm working a 60 hour week or etc., I still show up and do the practice. And what I notice is the practice burns up the stuff. And also, and also the psychotherapy and the psychology, etc., recognizing that from a historical context perspective, I don't think people were as traumatized back then. You know, I think there was. Uh, I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like as society, our communities, the the way children are raised now, I just feel like there's actually so much more trauma in the system. And in the past, you might have been able to just do the spiritual practice to liberate. Now I think it's wise to do both. To do both. Mm. Alrighty. Sending so many blessings to the human that sent me this email and gave me permission to answer it here. I don't know if this will be, I mean, my prayer is that this will just give you the next breadcrumb on the trail, right? You just need to know the next step and just keep focusing on that, the next step, okay? When I came out of the psych ward, I knew that I just need to show up to daily practice and to really review and reflect on the way my mind was operating so that I could begin to understand my psyche from the inside out. And that's, that's where I started, you know, that's where I started. And 20 years later, it's almost, yeah, like I was going into the second psychosis 20 years ago right now. <laughs> ah, blessings on that, right? Blessings on that. What a journey. What a journey. So much gratitude. <sighs> I'm 
blessings on the goddess. May all beings be free. Mm. And if you want to work with me, you know where to find me. Just reach out.